All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Israelites, right? I've I, I seen I've seen something happen. And the person was basically saying um about how 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 would I know that you're an Israelite brother if you ain't wearing your fringes? That's what I saw an Israelite say to uh, another Israelite, right? And I thought that it was quite stupid for them to say that, to be honest with you, considering that the fringes do not make you an Israelite. But let me, let me find um, the scripture on fringes, man. All right. Let me, let me find it. This is Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. In fact, I'll start at verse 37. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of Yahweh, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart, and your own eyes, after which ye go a-whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your power, right, so that's the purpose of the fringes, that when you look at them, when you look on them, you're meant to remember to keep the laws, right, so is it more important that somebody remembers to keep the laws, or is it more important that somebody has the fringes, right, which one is more important, is it more important to look like you're keeping the righteousness of the laws, more or is it more important to actually keep them right it's more important to actually keep them but when you understand the scriptures right you understand that even keeping the laws does not mean that you're going to receive salvation because the salvation isn't of works because if it was of works then that would mean that men can boast right so the fringes really don't mean nowhere near as much as people think they are just like how physical circumcision also does not mean as much as people think that that is. And it's a lot harder to circumcise your flesh than it is for you to put borders on your on your clothes. I guess you could say that, right? I guess you could say it's a, it's, it's a physical thing. It's a more physical thing to put. It's a more easy thing to put borders on your fringes than it is to actually be physically circumcised. Yet the scriptures say that even physical circumcision isn't even doesn't even mean that much, man. Let me get that. Where is that? Um, Salakia. This is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. For in a Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh love. So just because one Israelite is circumcised and another Israelite is not circumcised, that don't mean that one's really got more faith than another, man. Because the circumcision, the purpose of the circumcision was also a thing that you're supposed to remember to keep the laws. Right? But women don't get circumcised. So that would mean that women would have more of an excuse for why they ain't doing things than others. But they ain't got no excuse. Right? Let me find another one. Yeah, here we go. Let me read this. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 12. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer only lest they should suffer persecution for the crush of a mashayok. For neither for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire you to have but desire you but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. And that's what people are doing with the fringes, right? All those Israelites that were in the fringes talking about, hey, brother, I wouldn't know how you, how would I know you're an Israelite if you ain't wearing the fringes? Well, what's the 12 tribe sign for then, man? If you're saying that you need people to have fringes on to know that they're an Israelite, what's the point of the 12 tribe sign then? Is the, is the 12 tribe sign prophecy not based on trying to get a get a get an idea of what most of the tribes look like. Is that not what the purpose of the twelve tribes sign that every Israelite most of them have outside? It's not about oh I got you need to have fringes on brother for me to know you're Israelite. Now nah, you don't. 
Now you don't, man. That that's that's not the thing that makes you do that because an Edomite could put fringes on them. And are you gonna believe that Edomite, no matter how he's acting, because he's got fringes on, he's gonna be a he's an Israelite. No, you're not gonna do that. Verse 13 again. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. So just like how people was in the times past telling other men to get circumcised, even though they wasn't keeping all the laws and they were circumcised. So, but they wanted other men to get circumcised. So that could be like, see, I've had this many people that have got circumcised just this week. And that's what Christians even do. Even Christians do that kind of stuff with baptism, man. They want to baptize people. They want to take a photo of them. They might catch them crying after they've been baptized with their eyes looking up to the sky. Right. Then they put it on their Facebook page to show, look how many people I've baptized. Look how many people I've personally brought to the Lord. So that they can try and make out like they're doing something like, like they're giving people salvation when they're not, man. So just like how you're not supposed to glorify in baptizing people, you're not supposed to glorify in, in wearing fringes. And you're not supposed to glorify in being circumcised neither, right? Because if you've been circumcised according to the law, what can your boast really be when circumcision according to the law was done when a man is eight days old? Who remembers being eight days old? Who remembers that? So just because another brother, when he was eight days old, didn't get circumcised, right? Does that mean you're better than him because your parents decided to circumcise him when he was eight days old? No, it don't. Because it's about the works that somebody does. So if one person's got fringes on and they're circumcised and they was baptized in the name of Yahweh Shai also, right? But then they get a karagma in their hand. Is that person going to receive salvation more so than a person that didn't get baptized, right, in some water, but they got baptized by the word, hasn't weared fringes ever once in their life, right, hasn't been circumcised, but doesn't take the karagma, would that mean that that person's better than that person then? No, it wouldn't. So you can't boast in fringes, man. You can't boast in being circumcised. Verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory Saving the cross of our Lord, Yahweh Shemashayach, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in a mashayach, Yahweh Shai, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So you ain't supposed to glorify in having your flesh circumcised, man. Just like how you ain't supposed to glorify that you're wearing some fringes, and you ain't supposed to say something as stupid and as silly as, oh, how would I know that you're, that you're an Israelite, brother, if you, if you ain't got fringes on? Because when you outside with a 12 tribe sign and people come up to you and ask about the 12 tribe sign, you say to them, we believe that you're an Israelite because you're under the curses. You don't say, oh, we believe you're, you're Israelite because you wear fringes. You don't say that. You don't say that, man. The purpose of the 12 tribe sign is for everyone to know that's what the majority of the 12 tribes look like, man. It's got nothing to do with fringes. Because if these people are in the world living their lives, they're not just going to have fringes, man. And if the first thing you're saying to them when you see them is to wear fringes, you're putting upon them a burden that, that you could have said something different. You could have said, do you eat pork? Right? And then be like, well, you probably shouldn't eat that. You know, the Bible says, or you could have told them what the name of the Lord is. You don't even need to tell them about any laws. You could have told them, oh, you know this name that they everyone calls upon. That's not the name. The name of the Lord is really Yahweh Shai. Or you could have told them about some prophecies, the MOTB, to not take that. You shouldn't be trying to put burdens of fringes on people, man. That's stupid, in my opinion. It's a stupid thing to, to try and put burdens of law on people, man. Rather than warn them of certain prophecies. Because the more somebody believes in the Lord anyway, they're going to naturally not want to start breaking certain commandments anyway. But pushing burdens of the law on people is stupid, man. You're going, you're going too far trying to push burdens on people that you know that you ain't even keeping the law, all of the law yourself. Let me see if I can find any other things, man. In fact, yeah, there's one in Romans, the second chapter. Yeah, I remember that one. I think, yeah, Romans 2. This is Romans chapter 2 and verse... Um,
verse 21, Romans chapter 2 and verse 21. Thou therefore which teacheth another, teacheth thou not thyself, teachest thou not thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? So if you're going around telling people that they have to have fringes on, right? Well, you then you better make sure you have fringes on every single time, man. Because I know that people that say that stuff about the fringes, they don't have all of their clothes with fringes on, man. Right? And having the fringes hidden underneath something isn't really wearing the fringes, man. Because the purpose is supposed to be that you can see them. Not so that, oh, I can feel I can feel them on me. No, you're supposed to be able to look down and see them on you. Right? But it's more important that you're doing certain things. That's what's more important because that's the purpose of the fringes. Just like how that was the purpose of circumcision also. Verse 22. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. So if you're saying, man, you gotta put the we gotta keep them commandments, brother, and you're talking about how you wear fringes, and then you are breaking the laws, and you know you are. So I don't know who people think they're fooling when they say they're not breaking any laws. We, you are, man. Right? Just because we can't prove that you are, doesn't mean you're not. You know that you broke them, man. Now, if you're thinking that you're not breaking the laws because you're thinking in your mind, I can sleep with my woman on the Sabbath. Well, that's not real. You can't sleep with your woman on the Sabbath, really. Right? But if you're putting a burden of the law on people and then you break the law yourself once, now that's why you're going to be a liar. And make it like you're not breaking the law because you're trying to tell everybody else that you're not breaking it. So then you're going to have to now and try and be super righteous. And, and you're going to end up destroying yourself. Which the Bible says, don't be over-righteous, man. That's what the Bible says to not do. So why would you put a burden of, of fringes on people, right? Or put a burden of being, of being um, circumcised on people. Or even when a person's first finding out that they're an Israelite. Start pushing loads of burdens of the laws on them. When you know that yourself struggle with keeping the laws. Because you know it's difficult. Which is the reason why we need a whole new covenant. To be able to perfectly keep them. Because let's say there's somebody right now that's keeping every single law. Right? And they are keeping them all. Well, they've got to continue to keep doing that now forever then. For the rest of their life. If they wanted to be immortal like how we're going to be under the new covenant. They would have to keep doing them in a wicked flesh. But Yahweh is going to have mercy on the Israelites and give us a perfect flesh that we can just naturally keep the Lord. The same way how we breathe, man. Just like how there's precocial animals that are born being able to walk. The Israelites are going to be born keeping the laws, man. They're going to be born knowing how to keep the laws. But putting a burden of, of laws on people right now is stupid because you know yourself that you ain't doing them all. For all the people that say stuff like that, man. And this is a lesson for people that are, are, are nervous about people that keep talking to them about the laws all the time, man. Verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written, for circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. And you can say the same thing about fringes. Fringes are good to have on all the time. If you're keeping the law and if every single time you look at them, remember, don't to sin. But if you're trying to do it as some kind of new fashion trend, well, then you're going off, ain't you? And then if you commit a sin with the fringes on, isn't that worse than if you committed a sin without the fringes on? Because you had the fringes on. So why didn't you look at them to know, to know not to sin? Since you thought that the fringes was, was the most powerful thing, right? Rather than actual faith. Now, can wearing fringes be a show of faith? I guess it can, right? I guess it could be. But you're not. why are you going to be overzealous for fringes when anyone can put fringes on? And a heathen can put fringes on their garment and border blue. Esau could put fringes on his garment and border blue. Does that mean that he's righteous now? No, it don't. Esau can get circumcised. Does that mean that he's righteous now? No, it don't, man. Esau's from Abraham too. And he's from Isaac. So if he wears fringes and 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 um and has has had been circumcised, does that mean he's righteous now? Does it even mean Esau is righteous if he starts keeping it? Does Esau become part of Abraham's promise if he starts keeping the laws? No, he don't. Because the promise was made to Abraham and his seed. 
not to many seeds, but to one, right? Which is Yahweh Shai. But who, which nation does Yahweh Shai belong to? The Israelites. Verse 25, for circumcision verily profit if thou keep the law, but if thou be a break of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And you can say the same thing for fringes. If a person not wearing fringes is keeping more laws than you, isn't he considered more righteous than you are? Verse 27, shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law, because it's born, we're naturally born uncircumcised, right? Just like how our clothes ain't made naturally with fringes on them too. You have to go through effort to put, to be circumcised, and you have to go through effort to have fringes on your clothes, right? Who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law, Verse 27 again, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. Because if a person wearing, wearing fringes and circumcised commits adultery, another Israelite that's not wearing fringes and not circumcised could judge them for committing adultery. So why are you going to flex on fringes? Why? It doesn't make any sense, man. Verse 28, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, and neither is your mind circumcised as well, just because you got fringes on. You ain't right just because you got fringes, man. I don't care what colour the fringes are. You could have fringes that match your shoelaces colour. So what? Right? You could have a garment that looks like a literal garment that would have been worn in ancient Israel, you could have a garment that King Solomon would have been happy to wear, man. You can, you can listen, here, here's how serious it is. You can have a garment on that's all purple with gold trims on there, right? And you can ride in on a horse to your congregation. But then if you get asked what Revelation 13 and 16 is talking about, you lie. So what good are the fringes? Or being circumcised when if you get asked about prophecies, you're lying. How good's fringes then? It don't obviously mean nothing, does it? You think that the Israelites in ancient Israel wasn't wearing fringes when they was committing adultery and when they was putting their brother into slavery and not releasing them after seven years? They was, they was wearing fringes then. Was we not wearing fringes during the time when Jeremiah was telling Israelites to repent? And how about when the Israelites got taken down by the Babylonians? Was we wearing fringes then? Or what about when the Israelites got taken down by the Assyrians? Was they wearing fringes? Or what about when the Israelites was talking about how, man, we want to go, we want, we, we, we want to, we want to make a golden calf? The Israelites was probably wearing fringes then, right? Or was close to the time period where they was going to be wearing fringes. Was the Israelites wearing fringes when they didn't believe that Yahweh was going to take down the Canaanites? Yeah, there was. Was Israel wearing fringes when Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked? Yeah, there was. Was Israelites wearing fringes during the time where there was wicked men among Israel, right? That was trying to join onto the Greeks. Was Israelites wearing fringes during that time? Yeah. Menelaus, that's written in the Apocrypha. He, Jason, I believe his name was Jason as well. Jason, who, who was another wicked Israelite, I believe, I believe his name is Jason, man, right? He was wearing fringes because he was the became high priest. He would have been wearing fringes, but he was causing Israelites to go into the Greek customs, but he was wearing fringes though. He more than likely would have been wearing fringes, man, when he was making the Israelites betray their culture. He was changing that. But he was a high priest though. So fringes, what, what does it really mean, man? It's about the content of a person, what they do. And that isn't no, 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 no gateway for none of you heathens to try and think that you're allowed in this because you ain't allowed in it, man. You ain't part of the covenants. Verse 29, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God, right? And the what the, the inwardly thing comes from Yahweh. No man can make their inward portion, man. No man made their own spirit. 
It was all given by Yahweh. So for all these Christians that want to try and think they can try and slide up into what the Israelites got, or for anyone that wants to get zealous for fringes, or zealous because they were circumcised, you wait, it's stupid to do that, man. Because you're putting a heavy burden on yourself. You're putting a heavy burden on yourself to where you're thinking that you're righteous. But Yahweh's going to make everyone get onto a chariot by thinking, man, I don't even deserve this. Right, there ain't gonna be no one getting beamed up that thinks, man. I knew, I knew I was a man of the Lord. I told you, I told you I was a man of the Lord. You know, there ain't gonna be no one saying that, man. I knew, I knew I, from the moment I was born. I always just knew I was chosen for something greater than this. There ain't gonna be nobody saying nothing like that. They're gonna be going through it during the day of the Lord, wrath, man. Thinking, man, I still believe though, man. I caught hell there. I caught hell there. That was close, but I still believe. I don't want to accept that Yahweh don't love me. I don't want to accept that Yahweh Shai don't love me. I still believe that even though I have did this and I have did that and I have did this and I have did that, I still believe that Yahweh and Yahweh Shai love me though. So I'm going to still keep believing because the mercy is still available. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, For by grace he is saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. Now the scriptures do say faith without works is dead. But the works that we do, where do they come from? Well, this next verse answers that. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in a mashiach, Yahweh Shai, to good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. So anything that we're going to do that does make us receive mercy, Yahweh said that we was going to do that. He already ordained that we was going to do those things that we did. But it's not because we wore fringes. It's ultimately because Yahweh has mercy on who he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. If you could get fringes, if you could get salvation by wearing fringes, right? When you go, if you if you worked in Burger King, man, if you went, to, if you or if you even went to Burger King, you'd see an Edomite at the counter where with fringes on, asking you asking you order, man. You'd see if you went to your corner store, you'd see Elamites wearing fringes, right? When you're walking past a group of Somalians, you'd see some Somalians wearing fringes. If they knew that, that's all you have to do to get salvation, is wear fringes. If you went into the pot, into a Weatherspoons, if you live in the UK, if you went into a Weatherspoons pub, you'd see Edomites screaming about how that how that football match result was dodgy. But it, you'd look down and you'd see that they got fringes on. If that's how easy it was, that fringes really meant that much. And if it was even about the law, that that could get you salvation, then all these heathen nations would keep the law. Right? But it's not even about that, man. It's ultimately about who Yahweh gave the promise to. Because the promise to Abraham was given before the law, right? Abraham was told he was going to get this promise. And then after that, the Israel, his, his seed, which was the Israelites, was being formed. They, were, they didn't even exist at the time Abraham was given the promise. Let's go, let's go to it. At the time when Abraham was given the promise, there wasn't even no such thing as an Israelite. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in mine house is my heir. That would have been Lot. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, meaning Lot, but he shall come, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowel shall be thine heir. And he, and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall be thy seed. And he believed in Yahweh and it was counted to him for righteousness. Right? So before Abraham even had the seed, man. What was given to him was given. Before the Israelites even existed. And if wearing fringes or being circumcised or even keeping a law. Meant that that could be taken away from the Israelites. Then it wouldn't be a thing about faith no more or by a promise. It would be a thing on works. Right? But it's not. And let me, let me get the scriptures to explain it, man. The scripture is going to say it better than I can say it, man. I don't want to just seem like I'm running my mouth up here. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. I do not frustrate the God, the grace of God. For if righteousness cometh by the law, then a mashiach is dead in vain. Right? And he ain't died in vain, man. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, 
it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So it's not a thing about how anyone can keep the law, right? That it's not about that, man. It's not about, oh, I can keep the law to get what you Israelites are supposed to get. Now you can't. If you ain't an Israelite, you ain't been promised this and you can't get it. There's no way that you can, there's no way. L let, me, let me show it, man. Let me show in the scriptures that there's no way. Because who's the main one that wants what Jacob's got? Is it not Esau? Well, let's read this. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. Lest there be any fornicate or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For he know that how afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So if you're seeking repentance carefully with tears, you think you ain't going to consider, man, can I get this if I keep the laws? Or if I just copy everything that Jacob does, can I also get the same things as Jacob? You think Esau wouldn't have considered that when it was just him and Jacob that existed at the time as the progenitors of their nation? You think he wouldn't have said, you know what? I've watched Jacob. He's a plain man dwelling in tents. Let me just copy and see how he lives and see if I can copy that. And then if that gets me, he's blessing. No, it's not even about that, man. There's no way that you heathens can get this. And that's why Yahweh set up like extreme things for you to heathens to even have a chance to try. But he's just mocking you by doing that. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35 does say if Yahweh, which gives the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, Yahweh hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done. Saith Yahweh, now watch this. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 22. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, right? Neither the sands of the sea measured. So will I also multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. So even David himself is being is going to be given whole multitudes of seeds, man. Right? David is going to have many sons in the kingdom of heaven. Many. Right? And so are the Levites too. And when you go into other scriptures in Isaiah 60, for example, all the Israelites are ultimately going to become a nation. Each Israelite is going to become like a nation, man. Each individual person that comes from a tribe, there's going to be thousands of them. He's going to have a thousand sons and each of his sons might have a hundred sons. So how many men is that that ultimately belong to that one man's line? Right? And then how many men is that going to be that ultimately belong to the man that's their tribe's named after? How many men are going to belong to the tribe of Benjamin? If one man from Benjamin has a thousand sons, but in that man, each of that man's thousand sons have a hundred sons each, how many people then belong to Benjamin? How many? Loads. Sands of the sea amount. I'm going to end the lesson there, man. Don't, don't glorify, fight, or don't let anybody make you think that you have to glorify in your fringes, man. Or even in being circumcised. Or even in the amount of laws that you can keep. Because if it was a thing about the laws. Well some of those people in the land of Israel. That are Edomites man. They're keeping some of the laws better than how we keep them over here. They've got the ability to keep the things that are written in Leviticus the 23rd chapter properly. So if it was a thing about the law. We're lucky it's not a thing about the law. Because that would mean that they can take our blessing away. But they can't do that man. All praises to Yahweh by Shami Yahweh Shai and Shalom to the elected nation of Israel. Shalom.